Hey viewers, and welcome to another tutorial video. Today we're just going to have a quick look at driving with rail driver with different locomotives. We're going to start with the Flying Scotsman with steam. This is just going to be a quick and basic video of the basic controls. So first up, I want to unlock the passenger doors, use the left D-pad down here. Now I'm not sure if the Flying Scotsman will actually react to the light switch or not. No, that uses the large ejector. All right, what does the wiper thing do? It uses the blower. Well, there you go. Imaginative. All right. Well, we don't actually need the ejector, so let me just uh, exhaust the vacuum. It's almost time for us to go, so we'll be looking at the other controls. We're only going to do the basic ones. The ones controlled by rail driver are this brake that you see here, the main train brake. So let's bring that down to release, and let's just give it a little bit of a service application so that we don't go rolling away. We'll also want to bring our reverser to full forwards position. You can see as I move the rail driver, it's moving the reverser. And we are now in full forwards. Very good. Um, that's telling me to wait till 9.14, but to be honest with you, I don't want to. So I'm going to close the doors. And it's time to go once the doors are actually shut. So a bit of whistle. If you've got a two-tone whistle, often that's the high tone and the low tone, but Scotsman only has the one. So we will release the brakes, and you might think we'd go for the throttle, but no. On steam trains, the regulator is actually the uh, brake handle for just the locomotive itself. You can see we're starting to take off now. There we go. So we can close our cylinder cocks and we can start bringing our reverser back towards mid gear now. So we'll just bring it into the, the 40s for the moment. There we go, that'll do fine. Let's accelerate some more and let's watch the big beast pull out. Give it a bit more on the regulator. the basics of driving a steam engine with the rail driver and we'll bring our reverser back into the 30s now. What about stopping? Hmm. All right so bring your regulator back down until it's almost completely closed but not quite and then apply your brake and we'll just bring it into the mid-range of the service and that'll bring us to a stop and as we're coming to a stand just close your regulator. All that does is keep your coupling stretched out. Well, that's it for the steam engine. So I'll change trains now and we'll have a look at something, I don't know, maybe something electric with a combined brake and power controller. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? All right, see you shortly. Right, oh, we're now in the class 323. Let's get the doors open. There they go. And we'll jump back into the cab. So this one's got a combined power and brake handle as most electrics tend to do not all but most so let's bring our reverser into forwards and we might want to apply a little bit of brake so we push this one into the dynamic area so that's using the power brake handle and we will give the doors just a moment longer uh, how about some headlights that's put us on night headlights or we can have day headlights well, no headlights. There we go. And we can put our wipers on. There they go. And we'll close our doors now. I know it says to wait, but we're not going to. On most of these trains, you'll find that the reverser position doesn't really bear any relationship to the stickers. That's just life. And away we go. So just pop it into the power side of the equation. And we will accelerate away. Now the rail driver does offer a whole heap of other things that you can do with it. 
we're speeding quite a lot, but that's okay. There are a plethora of buttons along the front, and unfortunately, still to this day, they're different for nearly every train. I really do counsel that they be the same, but, well, you know, that's life, isn't it? Anyway, what about stopping the electric train? Oh, well, that's not particularly hard, because we can um, just push it into the braking range and we'll stop. That's pretty much it for the electric train. So, let's put the reversal back into off, and we'll take our master key out, and we'll get up, and we'll go and leave the passengers to fend for themselves while we jump out here, and we'll look back at our train and go, well, okay, let's try a diesel then. See you shortly. Righto, we've jumped over to Cajon Pass, and we're going to jump in one of the big AC44s, and, sorry, ES44s, there you go. And we will jump in here and we shall use this one. So first thing I need to do is pop our reverser in. We need to put our Genfield switch on. Say good day, mate, how are you going? And let's release the brakes. You can use the independent brake if you want to. We might want to put some lights on the subject. Reverser into forward. Let's throttle up. Let's go straight to notch three. And as that powers up, we will release the independent brake. And rail driver being what it is, just popped itself up to throttle four, which is fine. And away we go, and the back of our train is now moving, so it's probably not a very long train. Let's kill the bell. Also drop some sand if we want to. So the buttons do pretty much what you'd expect them to do. Cruising along out of the yard. We can notch up now. Rail driver is sort of infamous for being a little inaccurate. So we just went from four to six with a tiny movement at the lever. Up to seven, and of course we've gone into notch eight now, as we move along. So what about the dynamic brakes? Because there's two handles here. There's a throttle handle and there's a dynamic braking handle. Well, that's simple enough. As you throttle back down, come back down to the idle position and you cross the bridge, you notice the dynamic handle went into setup when I crossed the bridge. I give that the momentary few seconds. And then we can continue on into the dynamic range and we will start dynamic braking. So it's still controlled by just the one lever. We should see that starting to have an effect soon. There it goes. There's a bit of a time period. I should have stayed in setup for longer, but you know, just a demo. So what about using the train brake at the same time? You shouldn't really with dynamics, but you can. So let's say you apply your auto brake and then bail off using the independent handle. And I just moved my rail driver right out of the picture. That was quite clever. All right, brake's off. Let's take this back to off now. And we can do the really rude thing to our couplers and just start powering up again. While we watch this thing cruise away and we will come back with a different train. So this is just a really quick run through, train by train, of how to use the rail driver. So I think maybe we'll come back with something a little more foreign this time. So see you shortly. Righto, this time we're in the DBBR103. So let's just jump into the cab and see if I can remember how to set this one up, because it's been a little while. So I'm guessing the first thing we want to do is put the reverser in, and we probably want to put that to M would be my bet. Uh, there'll be a switch around here somewhere we need to do something with. Actually, no, that'll look kind of okay to me. No, I think we're okay. Yeah, it'll look kind of okay. Uh, there'll be a brake key somewhere. There it is. No, 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 no. Brake key, brake key, brake key. Let me get on the brake key. There we go. Okay, we're on the brake key, so let's release the independent brake. Now, 
there might be some kind of brake lever that sets what the brakes do. I don't see one, so let's just try and release the brakes. That sounded promising. The brakes are off. Great. Have I done enough? Well, we've made the tap changer work. And we're moving! There we go. So once again, we're just using the throttle lever to uh, turn the train's steering wheel. It's not really. It's a tap changer on the transformer. And if I remember rightly, you've got to be a little bit careful on this one or you blow the circuit breaker. So you notice this one's got a dynamic brake handle over here, which is coinciding with the electric brake handle. So let's just get a bit of speed up and then we'll have a bit of a play with that. So the same lever is quite versatile. Move from train to train to train. It's principally more or less the same thing most of the time. The only exception is steam where you come over here. And the 101. Ah, the 101. Beeped at me. I don't have any safety systems turned on, so I don't care. All right, we've gotten up to 40, so let's have a look at this dynamic brake handle. So how do you reckon that works? Oh, look at that. It's a bit like the American one. It just controls the other handle when you go into the other range. So that's going into the dynamic position now. So let's pull this back to neutral with dynamic brake off. And the train brake is the other handle. Now this one runs both the uh, air brake and the dynamic brakes at the same time because that's just how this train's designed. Well, there you go. That's about it for the German train. Beeping at us again because it likes doing that. So we'll pump him back up and give him a little bit of power. It'll probably figure it out after a little while that I want some power. If I haven't blown the breaker. Messing around with things so much. Yeah, it'll get there eventually. It's doing something. Have I blown the breaker? I don't know. But anyway, you get get what the rail driver's doing, so that's enough. So you can pretty much see that they are all more or less the same. And they're all pretty easy to control. So there's one more I'd like to show you that actually is just a little bit different. So we'll be back in a moment for that one. Last up, we're going to run something a little bit different. It's one of my favourite trains because it's so bloody quirky. So let's get the doors open and let's jump in and set this thing up. So we've already got our master key turned on, so that's fine. Uh, we want to get into forwards, where we are, and we want to get... Notice I'm using the train brake handle. We'll get into first gear. Let's get the doors shut bit of a honk to warn people we're going and we want to release the brakes so they're releasing and we want to throttle away there we go might want some headlights too be a good idea so we pull out here in the 101 on northern trans pennine and we're getting into the top of the rev range now so we throttle off Wait for it to get into the bottom of the rev range and then get it into second gear and throttle up again. So this train's actually quite a pain in the bum to drive if you're using the keyboard, I have to say. It's not too bad with the controller. But with the rail driver, it's just magic. And off we go again. ignoring the speed limits cruising along we're only supposed to do 10 mile an hour through here apparently and that's okay but you do in fact get the idea now what about stopping in this one well it's actually quite easy but you want to be in fourth gear because you know the LMS video taught us that and then we just want to bring the brake round to lap which is where I should have left it before and we do a bit of an apply need a bit more so a bit more of an apply slowing nicely for the curve now I'm not going, only going double the speed limit it's fine so we can release the brakes now and we're going to want to go up into second gear because we slowed down rather a lot and we can start accelerating again 
So there we go, that's about all there is to driving the 101 with the rail driver and this is by far the most quirky train for driving with the rail driver. Well, I hope that's been useful for you and just showing you that the rail driver is kind of a fun controller and it's just um, makes driving trains a lot more immersive and a lot more like you're in the cab. So you've seen that the controls on the rail driver don't necessarily match up with the controls in the train, but they're a sort of an approximation and as you get used to each train you'll come to understand what it should be and what the rail driver actually does with each one. Um, you can go into the settings and actually see what the mappings are because of course the keys do all actually have proper mappings. I find I don't use the keys on the rail driver at all. Um, all of these ones, but they do all have mapping. So if you have a look at, say, the Stania, we can see that it's got pause menu, small ejector, small ejector. There's a couple more first person camera, switching cameras, and things like that, firebox door, and the like. And it tells you what all the other controls do. So that's how you find them out. In the 101 that we were just in, there's a few more things. You've got master switch, engine start, Warning devices are turning the AWS on, resetting the AWS, destination blind so you can roll your destinations up and down, emergency brake valve, gear increase and gear decrease. You don't have to use the uh, brake if you want, you can, you don't have to. I find it's quite useful, it represents a lever and it makes you feel good because it's a good physical action. Anyway, that is about all I wanted to show you with this video, so let's just watch the 101 disappear into the sunset. If you've got any questions about the rail driver or using it on your trains, let me know in the comments below and I'll be happy to help you out. Alrighty, have fun folks. See you later.